Today's project is a piece of cake. Huh? Adam Krutinger here. Last year on my birthday, I did a puppet building project that was literally my own birthday present, which you can see right here. And if you wanna see more about that project, go ahead and click the link up here or down in the description. This year's birthday project is literally a piece of cake. I've gotten a ton of comments of people asking me to make food puppets. So I thought this was the perfect place to start. Let's get started. For the base of this puppet, we're gonna use these giant car sponges. But before I get too far with these, I wanna to start to draw a pattern. I'm gonna use these to get the height that I need. So about there and there. I'll come in just a little bit to give myself some room. Now I'm gonna have to cut these sponges because I think because of the thickness of my hand, I'm gonna have to double this up. So I'm gonna have to cut these edges flat. Now the best way to cut this kind of foam is actually with a turkey carver like this. And then I'm gonna glue them together like this. I like to use Super 74 for this. Let this dry and then we'll put it together. There we go, now I have a nice big piece of foam that will fit my hand for my two layer piece of cake. All right, now let's draw out this pattern. I'm gonna go from there to there. Measure how wide this is. It's about six inches. So I'm gonna go three and three from this edge. To get the right curve on this, I need a string and a pin. All I'm gonna do is tie a little knot in one side, line it up right there, and put the pin right at the tip of the pattern like that. Then I can just take my Sharpie and kind of push it through this string, hold down your pin, and then I get a nice, perfect curve like that. Kind of like a little pendulum. And then cut this pattern out. Now this is a nice pattern, but it's a little bit too straight. I want to make it a little bit more puppety, so I'm going to kind of curve these lines a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is trace this out again. And then I'm going to use another type of ruler called a French curve. You'll notice it has this curved edge here. And what I'm going to do is line up these two corners there. I'm gonna remember this number. So I'm gonna put the, for, for mine, you can put yours wherever you want, but for mine, I'm gonna make sure I line it up on the 19 for both sides. So like that, and like that. I think that's gonna work really well. Cut that out. So now I'm gonna fold this on that center line. That's gonna make this edge easier to line up with the center seam on the foam. All right, and there we have our two layers of the cake. It's gonna go together like this, and this is where I want the mouth to be. So next I'm gonna try to figure out exactly where I want the entrance hole to be on the bottom one. I think I want it to be pretty far back so that I have enough room for my whole hand like this. Typically I like about a four inch hole. Let's see if that works. I might have to go a little bit smaller. These are my favorite type of blades to use. They're called Persona. I have a link to these down in the description. I think that'll work nicely. Now, since this is the bottom, I wanna cut a little space for my thumb to be too. So let me just kinda trace that out. Now, this part's not gonna go all the way through. I'm just gonna go down maybe about halfway. You might want to save this to make a cupcake later. 
So I think that's gonna be pretty good. Now I have to do a similar thing for the top. So let me line this up and kind of see where my hand lands. So I'll put my hand in like this and then I'll sandwich it down in. Let me kind of see where my hand lands. Okay, right about there. So let me kind of trace what I'm seeing here. Now, I don't wanna to go too deep. Again, you just wanna have enough room for your hand to get in. So maybe about halfway or a little bit less than halfway, depending on how thick your hand is. Another thing that's cool about these blades is they're really soft. So I can actually bend this into a U shape and kind of use it to carve pieces out like this. Okay, now for the mouth plate, let's find out how big it's gonna be. If my hand is here, the deepest I want it to be is lined up with that part of my hand. So let me make a little dot here. Don't put the dot on the outside because this is gonna be showing when the puppet is finished. So I got that little dot there. And now I wanna transfer that to my pattern. So let me make the mouth plate pattern. I'll trace this. And I'm even gonna trace it in just a little bit, probably about a quarter of an inch. Now I'm gonna cut this out of a plastic. I like to use plastic from a storage bin like this. I like to give it a light sand too. So this part might be kind of optional, but I like to kind of set this in a little lower than the foam. Cause you can see right now it's technically sitting on top of it. So I'm gonna carve down just a little bit so that it lays flat. I like to use contact cement because it's a really secure glue, but you could easily use hot glue or something like that. Hey, yeah, that looks good. Coming along. Now that that piece is done, we're gonna do the fabric mouth plate. For this project today, I'm just gonna use these felt squares. Since this mouth plate is gonna be in between these two layers of cake, it's gonna act as our strawberry filling. So I'm gonna trace it out using these patterns. Then I'm gonna trace out where the mouth plate is so I can line it up correctly. So it's just there. So I'm just gonna draw this line here. And then the rest of this is gonna get cut out like that. Now what we have to do is sandwich these two pieces together like this and we're only gonna stitch across this line here. Now we have to glue this down. Now to glue the mouth plate in, again, I'm gonna use the Super 74. But since this is a spray adhesive, it's easy to accidentally get it in places where you don't want it. And you really don't want it on the sides of this foam. So to prevent that, I'm gonna use some painter's tape to cover up the edges. I'm gonna use a light brown felt for the crust on the bottom as well. For that, I'm gonna use the same pattern. 
I just have to make sure I transfer the hole. To make the frosting for our cake, I'm gonna use some felt and some fleece. This is 12 ounce nylon fleece. This is what a lot of professional puppets are made out of. I'm gonna fold this in half to double it up, and then I'm gonna cut out two of these cake shapes. Next, I'm gonna take this doubled up felt and wrap it in the fleece. This will make my frosting a little bit thicker. Now I'm gonna glue this on. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing for the back. Next, we're gonna add some colorful frosting designs. I'm gonna use blue for today, but you can use whatever color you'd like to use. And just like that, dessert is ready. That was a piece of cake. You look delicious. You're not gonna eat me, are you? Hmm. I won't, but somebody might. Ah! Huh? Ah! 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 I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this interesting puppet. If you enjoyed this project, you can also download the pattern from my website, or you can just follow the steps in this video. I also have a ton of free patterns on my website too. Make sure to check out puppetnerd.com for all your puppetry related needs. That's it for now. See you next time.